everyone welcome back to my channel so today's video i'm going to be showing you guys how i did this set it is a builder gel set and these butterflies are hand drawn so you get to see how i achieve this look with colors and techniques i use so first i'm going to be starting with the gel bottle ink rubber base as my base the ideal pink builder from light elegance i removed all the product from her nails i know they look crazy They've been filed down, um, but there is still product in some areas. So that's where you're, you'll see the inconsistent colors and textures. So never mind that. So like I said, I removed product. I cleansed the nail with acetone first to dehydrate the nail plate and um, sanitize it, pH, balance the pH, sorry. And then I'm going to be polishing this on as close to the skin as I can get it without touching. And then over the entirety of the nail, um, please excuse my mother's dry skin. Also, I believe she wanted me to tell you guys that. So I cured that for the recommended time. And now I'm going in with this brush. It's not a gel brush. It is a brush I got from like Hobby Lobby or Michaels. And it's just a filbert brush. Again, I always refer you guys to alpha brushes. I like their gel brushes and they're for a great price. And I'll have a link down below if you're interested in browsing around their website. So I'm taking and I'm putting a base layer of this Ideal Pink, just a thin layer to start off because with Builder Gel, generally the thicker you build it up, the more heat it will give off during the heat spike. So I didn't want this to be extremely uncomfortable for her. Of course, we can take measures to help reduce the heat spike and kind of curve it down. Um, but again, it's just easier for me also just to do work in kind of some thin layers at the beginning i applied a very thin layer of the ideal pink just kind of polished it on in a way and i cured that then i went and applied another thin layer and kind of polished it on didn't cure it and that becomes my slip layer and then i took a bigger bead of the gel and now i'm moving it down the nail as you can see and i'm just walking it from left to right and you can see i'm very lightly touching the product you just really need the tip of the brush to kind of move that product around this is not they don't consider this like when i say they um i'm referring to light elegance they don't consider this product to be a self-leveling product um but i do find and i say this all the time that the more you kind of manipulate it it becomes um you know it moves a little more the viscosity becomes a little bit thinner and it kind of takes a self-leveling state so as you can see i'm moving it down and it does have a quality about it that looks very smooth still um if this was you know more a more runny viscosity it would self-level much better much easier but if you are trying this product um and you want it to kind of you know the consistency to kind of loosen up some i recommend maybe you stir it a little bit just be cautious not to cause air bubbles also and just remember, do not dig into this product. I'm really just using a very light, light pressure, just feather light in the tip of that brush just to move that product down and kind of push it. If I want the product to be thinner, I'll go ahead and add more pressure just to kind of thin it out. But again, it's all relatively light pressure. If I want to leave the product a little bit thicker, I won't apply as much pressure so I don't remove as much product. And I'm just looking at it from all angles just to make sure I have the apex where I want it and that, you know, I don't have significant lumps and bumps and inconsistencies. So well, as you guys are watching me, we it I am recording this pretty live. So we are in the the very beginning stages of fighting the COVID-19 pandemic. And so I hope that you guys, when you're watching this video, it you know, besides me taking this moment to talk about it, it really kind of helps ease your mind. And I really want to put out a lot of videos as I'm in quarantine. So you guys are going to see my rough little hands even more. We're going to do um, art videos, maybe even different types of videos, you know, just to kind of keep busy and keep positive. And even if you don't do nails and you're looking for a new hobby, hopefully Amazon is still working and fishing. We can get us at least some art supplies and some hobbies to our house so we can you know remain busy in this time guys um but let's dive back into the video so i cured uh the product of course and i filed and shaped off camera um well i shaped off camera 
and I do apologize. I turn the hands a funny way. If you ever taken a class with me or anything, I have tried to capture it in like two or three videos. I can't recall which ones. You'll just have to watch them on see, right? Um, so I do follow it. I do shape off camera, but I am, of course, finishing finish filing, and I'm using the Poochie's nails smooth top fine grit bit and i'm using very light pressure to debulk i generally in my early videos i don't recommend to use this especially when you're starting out because builder gel files so easily it's a much softer product than acrylic or even poly gel so if you're going to take a bit like this to acrylic if you're using a bit like this with acrylic it's you know it's not really drastic it doesn't debulk as fast with builder gel it debulks faster so I just say that to say be cautious if you're going to use a traditional like fine grit carbide bit. I um, do recommend, you know, if you're a sanding band type of person, you know, you go in with a sanding band. I'm personally not. Um, a, an equivalent is the crosscut bit, which popped up on the screen right as I said it. Um, it's essentially it does what a sanding band does. You can use it on a natural nail, you know, with the correct technique at a very a low speed. Um, but it can also smooth and file product. I use this in place of buffing as well. And then also to kind of flush out the cuticle area so we can get that nice and smooth. And so um, we can get it where it's kind of looking like the product is growing from out of the skin. So you guys, um, just tell me, you know, down below, what do you want to see? Which techniques, what information, what type of videos you want to see? I really have the time now to really get involved and give you guys the content that you want and just experiment with different things. So just let me know, you know, down below. And I hope you guys are doing well and taking the necessary precautions, self-distancing and just quarantine and staying out of the way and really taking this serious you guys please my fellow nail techs just fellow people people who follow me i want y'all to be well healthy and really just curve the impact of this so um i'm using a white charcoal pencil on the nail i'll be using these following colors um i'm using quite a few madam glam colors you know you guys know i love madam glam you can go use code tabitha for 30 percent off always i'm using this color club gel in east austin I've had this color for many years, probably over four, and it's still working really good. This is also Hue Better Run From Your Life. It's a one-step gel polish from Finger Paints, which I got from Sally's, and the Bambino Art Liners. I'll be using the brush that comes with it and also additional brushes with this product. I also use, I think, Perfect White and Perfect Black from Madam Glam as well, and I think I showed that later in the video, along with Madam Glam's top coat. And again, you can use code Tabitha for 30% off if you're, you know, looking to get some supplies and you know experiment during this time so i'm going to be using this white charcoal um pencil to kind of sketch out my design what i'm looking to do is half the butterfly good on one and then kind of mirror that on the rest of the nails so i'm just going in i did this quite a few times but i just want to show you guys that you know it did take some attempts i'm looking at a photograph we had about two reference pictures and so um i use that one for the color and the other for the style of the butterfly um so i'm just looking at the picture and i'm like trying all different ways i think i'll do like two other attempts that i didn't capture on camera but you know it does take some time to get things right i know we see like these pieces of art and to some people it comes very naturally and easily and you know to others sometimes you need to try a few times and especially when you start diving into different mediums or art types you know that you're not accustomed to even if you are familiar and you know feel confident in doing some forms of art so once I got that one side how I wanted it I went ahead and lined the fingers up and I'm just kind of mirroring it on the other side it makes it very easy if you could like do one if you could just crank out one then the rest will come easier because you can kind of see how far you need to swing the wings out you know where to stop them when it comes on the inside and you can kind of get the proportions right if you can just get one you see how they line up i'm making sure you know the wings look even and then i'm going to take that finger and match it up with its mirrored partner on the other hand so I, the one that i got right i'm going to then go in and mirror them on the other hand so our hands are crossed 
over each other um but you know i'm able to crank out this butterfly much easier on the other hand and not have to guess and also this helps me ensure that the body types are real similar and it just really simplifies this process so definitely a big tip right here so i kind of got a little bit loose with my drawing when i got to the other hand um, just because I know I was going to have to clean up a lot of it with painting, but I just want to make sure I had my proportions right and kind of my angles together. So I just put them together and I just really want to make sure when I put them together, it looks like a cohesive butterfly. So next I'm going to take again the, the Madame Glam Perfect White and I'm going to fill in the whole body of this butterfly and get that outline and crisp it up. Um, I was going to go in initially with art brushes, but it came up across really easy with me just using the brush that came in with the gel polish. I wasn't expecting it, but I was like, hmm, I guess I filled that in with this brush. And then I just did the rest like that. So after I go in and fill in the bodies, I went ahead and wiped off that white charcoal. Make sure you do that, especially before you top coat. So I wipe that off. And next I'm going in with a brush in those gel polish colors. And I'm just stippling these colors on. This brush is from Wildflowers. It's a part of their kit um, that they have, their brush kit. And I can't recall which color this is. Okay, so I went and checked and it is the dark orange brush in the Wildflowers brushes. Uh, they do sell them individually as well, so you don't have to get it with the kit. So I'm just taking these colors, like I said, and just stamping them on. I know that looks like a mess and random, but I'm just taking them kind of in the, the color order. Again, I had an inspiration pick for the colors, um, so we went based off that. And I'm just going from the inside with that Hue Better Run for your, for your Life and then the East Austin and the other, I believe that all the other colors were the Madame Glam colors. And I'm just, again, stippling those on and blending those colors so that there's not this harsh line. This doesn't have to be like a perfect ombre, um, you know, 
at all i'm trying to make this kind of you know organic and have those different textures and you know colors where it's more pigmented in some areas and less in others so after i do this and kind of blend this i'll do two coats of these colors i'm kind of curing them in between layers just to kind of bring in more pigment especially um you know i wanted to deepen up that blue and just brighten up the colors and make sure they're vibrant after i do this and cure both the layers i'll go in with some flakes i'll be using the ether flakes from wave gel and i'll show them here in a little bit and press those in to the tacky layer of um, the art on this butterfly So after I stamp those flakes on, I'm going to be taking the blue long striper brush from Wildflowers and I'm going to be going in and adding the black detail lines. And I'm going to go in between using this brush, which is, it's very hard to navigate around curves with long brushes like this. Shorter brushes make it a bit easier. So I'm going to be taking the actual striper brush that comes with the, um, the Presto Bambina art liner and kind of fill in those curves and thicken up those lines. It's a, it's a short brush, but it's also thicker. And so again, I'm looking at a reference picture and um i think there is no shame in that at all please at all do not feel bad about using a picture for reference for color texture especially when you're going for something that is you know a bit more realistic um and you want to kind of mimic that please look at the the real thing so that you know what your mimic what makes it look the way it does what details are making this look like this type of butterfly even though this doesn't look you know realistic this doesn't look like a you know photograph picture of a butterfly at all but there's certain elements that make it you know kind of look more you know natural or at the very least in the manner you desire this is the style that my mother prefers she didn't want it to look overly cartoon and so i'm like what elements are making these ones not to her liking and preference and one of those things was the the striping and detail through the wings so i'm taking the time to add kind of more organic veining through the butterfly to make it look again not like a realistic photograph of a butterfly but not as whimsical and as kind of cartoon like and also um she again this is her preference she wanted the top wing to be a little bit more pointed and again those um not again but those white those white kind of detail little dots um you know not all butterflies have them not in the same way so again it was a a detail that made this look in the manner that she wants so i wanted to make sure i captured that so always you know please use you know reference and kind of you know consider art in that way like what about this is appeasing to you and what you know from an inspiration picture what elements do you want to kind of take from that and apply them to what you're creating so after i get all these details put in and added um you can see i'm using a daughter and just adding those little dots and you can kind of move 
the daughter in different ways, different angles, pick up some product and move at different angles and you'll get like smaller dots and bigger dots. And then I'm going in with that, um, the art liner brush from again, those Presto Bambina art liners, adding the body in the center. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. Again, it was just kind of like a line. Um, I didn't want to make it, um, have any points to it more organic. So it's just kind of like a just very natural with the brush I just came down and did a little stroke um so I go ahead and cure that these are all gel paints and polishes so I cured that and then top coated with the Madame Glam gel top coat I did want to show this I did draw this line a little bit thicker than I wanted so I'm taking a little skiver bit and I'm literally e-filing or drilling for you know it's kind of incorrect but drilling the color off of the nail um so that i can kind of clean it up right there so just you know a little way you can do a fix sometimes it's very i don't want to say barbaric but just like drill drill the color off um but it is an option so um on the other nails i put some um of the protein bond from young nails and that's just so I can ensure that the top coat will adhere to the nail. I had been doing that butterfly nail art for a very long time. So I, you know, I didn't know if she touched her skin or anything in the meantime, something that would, you know, keep the top coat from adhering properly. So I wanted to add that protein bond to help the adhesion of the top coat to the, um, to the enhancement and that way we don't have any separation or inconsistencies so i'm taking this heliotrope swarovski crystal this as far as i know is a discontinued color and i use my gel i've done bling nails many and plenty of times um and so i hear them as i usually do and this is our final look i hope you guys enjoyed this video um again down below just tell me what you guys are looking for looking to see um everybody please stay safe and turn on your alerts so you know when i post that way we, you know we could do art relax together all right you guys thank you for watching bye